Hi guys, I'm GT Day, the Average Joe Gamer, and welcome back to Wire, a series devoted to the weekly Star Citizen news and what I've been up to during the last week. This week I was really excited about getting some extra content out to you guys, but early on Wednesday when I turned on my PC to get to work, I was discouraged to see my computer monitor had been damaged. This put me behind on all my work even though I had a backup monitor ready to go, but the VGA to DVI adapter I had on the cable was not compatible with my graphics card. So I had to scramble to find adapters that will work with my card and a good friend of mine came to my rescue last night with two of them. Unfortunately the backup screen is not as nice as I had previously, but as they say beggars can't be choosers. So from now on until I get a new monitor we will be playing on a glorious 19 inches. So because of my little stumbling block I had no access to my PC and therefore it was a rather boring week. I found out however that you are able to play World of Tank Blitz on a Mac so I downloaded that on my 2013 13 inch MacBook Pro and kept myself entertained for the week. I even streamed it which was not a good idea because OBS Studio uses 40 to 60% of the CPU when streaming. That limited my game to between 15 and 30 frames per second which made it very hard to compete. As you can see in the background I did get to play some blitz and record it for you and at least it kept me busy for a while. Let's move on to calling all devs from Monday June 11th. The question this week that caught my eye was about the ability to agent smith into our friends NPC crews. The basic idea with this is to take the place of an NPC crew member when we join a friend in parties much like the agents from the Matrix movies. I've never felt that that would be a good way of going about it. Like Todd Pappy suggested that would break immersion if you can just teleport to wherever your friends are in the verse. Star Citizen is aiming at a certain level of realism and the agent smith approach would not be in line with that level of realism. My opinion on that is that you should travel to where your friends are. The other implication that Todd mentioned is that that would break systems in the game and potentially have influence on the economy. If a mechanic like that is not a necessity and it starts breaking systems in the game then it's obviously not worth having it. Luckily a large part of the game will be faster than light travel like quantum travel and jump points and that way it would make it easier for us to keep in reach of our friends to be able to join them in parties. Another way to keep up with our friends is for organizations to be based in a certain system and not to move too far away from that base of operations. Later on during the week during Reverse Diverse Jared added some information. The idea of agent smithing is not completely off the table in any form. CIG is still thinking of giving us some sort of ability to take charge of another player's NPC crew members. The idea is that you won't have access to your own ships, credits or reputation and that everything that is gained during the time you play as this NPC stays with the NPC. As I said earlier, I don't think you should be able to just Agent Smith into an NPC character as yourself and have all your things together with you. That would be just a little bit unbalanced. But this is just one way that CIG is thinking of making cooperative gameplay possible and I think it is an elegant solution to allow friends to play together. That might also be one way in which to use our capital ships in these great space battles that we are all looking forward to. Our org mates can temporarily agent smith into some NPCs on our javelins, idrises or bengals to help out during a battle with a rival org. So when the time comes that we do a big battle or if our org is attacked suddenly we can take charge of some NPCs to help fend off our attackers. That takes a whole new dimension in the game that might make it fun. I look forward to seeing how exactly they implement these mechanics and what limitations they impose to try and maintain some balance. In my opinion it's a pretty good question in the end because we got more or less the answer we were all hoping for, even though it took calling all devs and reverse the verse. Next we will tackle ATV and RTV together because both covered the topic I chose to focus on this week. This week on Around the Verse we did get a project update with a little bit of info about what the team is working on. The info was a bit sparse but I believe it was because they are really working hard to get 3.2 to a wider PTU release. We also had a featurette on two new weapons that is going into the game in Alpha 3.2 and I have to say the Castec Arms Scalpel Sniper looks really sharp. That said, the main attraction in ATV this week was the new concept ship, the Drake Vulture. 
The Vulture is the one man entry level salvage ship. I have to say that I quite like the design and the look of it and it fits perfectly into the Drake lineup. I can already see a full Drake fleet sporting two or more vultures along with a caterpillar for storage and a couple of buccaneers and cutlasses for protection. As you would expect it isn't a very large ship. It's only 33 meters long, 16 meters wide and 9 meters tall. That makes it a little bit longer than the Cutlass but has a smaller footprint as it is quite a bit narrower in the beam and it's a whole meter lower. The Vulture is supposed to be sneaky in the sense that it is a smaller ship with lower emissions. I do wish that it had a darker paint job and not this construction yellow that it comes in that would make it even a little more stealthier. It only holds 12 SCU of cargo space that is meant for the materials that you salvage. That is why I can see it being accompanied by a larger cargo ship like the Caterpillar that can carry up to 576 units of cargo. When you use the Vulture as your salvage ship, you will have to do some manual labor. Unlike the Reclaimer, you won't have salvage drones. You will have to place salvage charges to tear off chunks off the ship that you are salvaging. In those arms extending to the front of the ship, there seems to be some tractor beam mechanic to suck up the pieces that you are tearing off and that then gets refined inside the hull of the ship into usable materials in the cargo hold. My understanding of this mechanic is a bit sketchy, so if I do get this wrong, I will correct it when we see the mechanic in game. Now this ship did cause quite a bit of a stir online because it looks similar to the Venture Miner from EVE Online. I will have to concede that the similarities in the design is undeniable. To be honest, I've only played the tutorial bit of EVE so far. So I didn't even know of the existence of that ship until I saw it compared to the Vulture. Even I with my limited design ability envisioned the Vulture to have two arms like that. My vision was a mashup between the Herald and the Dragonfly and my idea was that the Dragonfly like arms would open up like claws to grip chunks of material while it gets cut up by a laser of sorts underneath the cockpit. So however unoriginal the idea by CIG was, it is not unfathomable that they got the idea themselves. From the sketches they've shown in Reverse the Verse, you can see that it evolved from a ship with these arms pointing downwards to the arms pointing forwards. But I can understand that switch. Those hanging arms would make it a rather clumsy ship and it would require some extravagant landing gear to make it work. That said, you cannot condone stealing work from your competitors. But there is enough differences in the designs of the Venture and the Vulture to set them apart. If the Prospector had a design like this, it would raise a lot more alarm bells and red flags for the obvious reason. Apparently though the EVE community was quite upset with Star Citizen stealing EVE's design. But on the same note, this is quite a widely used shape in the sci-fi world like Disco Lando pointed out in RTV. There are numerous examples of similar vehicles from a lot of sci-fi movies, shows and games. Maybe Chris Roberts should point out that the Durango carrier from Wing Commander 4 and the Valdor carrier from Privateer 2 had similar configuration. Did EVE steal these designs from Chris Roberts? Go look through other ships in EVE and compare them to ships from sci-fi shows and other space games and you will probably find similar designs there too. Did EVE steal those? I hardly think so. In these modern times overlapping ideas and designs are commonplace and there is nothing really 100% original anymore. To be fair, EVE Online did take it with some grace and a sense of humor with a tweet saying that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery and fair play to them. I'm partial to Star Citizen so it's easy to see where my allegiances lie, but this little feud between the Star Citizen and EVE Online communities is way overblown. It is first world problems folks, let's move on. That is my opinions on the Vulture Venture controversy. Let's look forward to what I am up to in the week to come. Over the next two days I will be finishing my subscribership of the month video featuring the Aegis Reclaimer. I will also finish a video on the ICC Collection subscriber flare weapons. Along with that I am also busy with an updated video on the Cutlass Black. I think I will also be building a castle in Conan Exiles. I have seen the fun other YouTubers had in building fortified structures and I decided I wanted to build something at a grand scale myself. At some point I'll be making a video about Conan Exile so keep an eye out for that as well. For the most part this week I'll be catching up with the work I wanted to finish last week before my monitor broke. So that's it for this week's edition of Wire. Thank you for watching and I hope there was some content that you enjoyed. If you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up below and a thumbs down if you didn't. Leave a comment below on what you liked and what you disliked and I will make an effort to improve. 
In the video description, you'll find links to all the content that I've covered today. And while you are down there, check out my other social media links and follow me there for more content. I would also massively appreciate it if you would support me on Patreon. Thanks to the few of you already doing so, you are my absolute heroes. Another way of supporting me is by visiting my merch store at designbyhumans.com forward slash shop forward slash gtday. I'm gtday, the average Joe gamer. And once again, thanks for watching. Stay awesome and I will see you in the next one.